Hello, this is Steve Laskovich of Luminous Works with a tip for InDesign users who want to be able to quickly, and I mean quickly, format text that might come at you as plain text and get it all styled up really nicely. Uh, there'll be a, a little download as well as part of this, so you, you'll have a little takeaway, a little gift in your basket. Have a look at this text. Notice how it's um, just plain text, but it's got some interesting little stuff going on. That's called markup. It's actually a form of markup called Markdown. It's a kind of markup that was invented by a couple guys, uh, John Gruber and Aaron Schwartz, back in the uh, early 2000s. It's been adjusted since, but it's used widely all over the place to, to give us a way to format plain text. But there's always been a missing piece, that is getting from uh, Markdown to InDesign. And there have been several attempts, but I'm hoping to give you one that's pretty easy. You might notice at the beginning of this text, there's a, a number of column pound signs, column hashtags, and depending on how many there are, that would indicate what kind of header we have. And you can have up to six levels of header. Um, you'll notice some text is surrounded by uh, asterisks or maybe underscores. Sometimes there's a little arrow or actually greater than sign in a space. Um, dashes down here, and I'm talking about down here, um, to indicate uh, lists. All common ways that we might do that if we're just typing fast, right? To try to bring attention to text or to say it's a this or a that. That's the purpose of markup. But what I want to show you is a super fast way to go from that to that. <laughs> By the way, I did not like pause the video and then, you know, do some things and then come back. That really was that fast. So I hope that intrigues you just a smidge. That we can go from what we had to this really, really swiftly. But first, just a reminder what markup is, and I'll be relatively brief. Markup is simply a way to take plain text like that, something that a typewriter might once have generated, and markup goes in and says, okay, this is a this, this is a that, and this should be strong, this should be emphasized, and so on, so that someone later can apply a style guide to it to make it beautiful. Over time, we've had things like HTML, but if you look at HTML, you can see the tags as they're called out there. Um, they work, and we have websites that use these all the time and all, but uh, <laughs> they're a pain in the neck to type, which is why um, Gruber and Schwartz invented um, Markdown to have a fast way to do their their develop their developers, and they had wanted a fast way to um, type things and have it get translated into HTML at some point. And there are many, many ways to go from Markdown to uh, HTML. But again, look at that how much easier that is. It's much cleaner looking. It's actually human readable a little bit more. And uh, most importantly, it's easy to type. So that's what I want to intrigue you with. That's what I want to implement here. So let's take a look at, um, won't bother saving this. Let me start with this. This is a blank document. It's got nothing for styles right now. Um, I do have my scripts panel open, and that's because uh, amongst the things I'm going to be giving you will be a script and a little support text file for it. It's very, very similar to the script that comes with InDesign. Let me dig deep to get to it. It's called Find Change by List, and it has its own little support list text file, which does a whole bunch of finds and changes and can even apply formatting for you. Ah, we're anticipating. And I made a very small adjustment to the script, even gave it a shortcut so it could be fast, as you saw earlier, and a text file that is a list of finds and changes to be done really fast. But more about the takeaway in a moment. How do we get plain text into InDesign? Well, someone has to write it. And luckily for plain text, they can write it in anything. Here is a text editor that I use for web coding, and it supports Markdown. All I had to do is save this as .md, and that's Markdown. Sadly, I can't place .md directly into InDesign. I have to make it a plain text file, maybe. But even this program can actually, on the right here, is a preview pane where I can actually kind of see it like HTML formatted. Very cool and very fast. So I could save this as a plain text file and drop that into InDesign by placing it. But what if you have a Word doc? That is, your, your writer writes in Word and wants to write it, write Markdown in Microsoft Word. Well, no worries. How do you place a Word doc and strip away any formatting that might be you know, hanging on it? So let's go get one, shall we? 
I'm going to do File, Place. That's the best way to get a Word doc. I guess I could copy and paste too. And there's one right there, Markdown Example, I called it. And I'm going to make sure I check the Show Import Options. That's the critical part right there. So that when I hit Open or double click on the file, I can tell the formatting to go to um, go away. So remove styles and formatting from text and tables. So none of that word residue will be, be lingering here. And what we get is our cursor loaded. I can click and there is some markdown. Now, I mentioned that that script over there does finds and changes. So I could do my own finds and changes. And you can see I've got some really funky looking stuff here. And that would find like two asterisks with some text in between uh, two sets of two asterisks. And to that, I could do a change format and pick, oh, a character style if I had one. But I don't have one yet. So I can do my own finds and changes one at a time. And that would certainly work. But that script and the list that accompanies it does lots of them very quickly. Have I said that too many times? I can't overstate how important that is. All right, so I need some styles. And you could build your own you know, for top level, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth level headers, you know, standard paragraph, block quotes or excerpts as they're called, uh, bulleted and numbered lists. Um, but I'm gonna save you the trouble. All right, so if you go to a certain URL, luminousworks.com slash markdown to ID dot zip, you can download a little zip file. And let me show you what that looks like when you get it open. It'll have three items in it. It'll have the script. It'll have a folder, find change support with the text file that is referenced by that script to do the finds and changes. It even includes the original find change list that cleans up text, gets rid of you know double spaces and extra returns and all that. And there's also this. <clears throat> this is a snippet, an InDesign snippet, which was nothing but a text frame I had selected in InDesign and simply dragged onto my desktop. In that text frame, I'm going to show it to you. Well, you might be noticing in the backdrop here, I have a web page open, just so I wouldn't forget to mention it. It's uh, markdownguide.org, and it's just a place where you can learn the syntax of Markdown. And you can see there is not a lot to it. In fact, quite a lot here might even be ignorable by InDesign users because it's how to get to HTML. And we're not necessarily going to HTML from InDesign. But it's pretty easy syntax, and you even get choices on things. So again, that was markdownguide.org if you want to learn more about Markdown. Now, <clears throat> I've got these things that I've downloaded from that URL. And this snippet in particular, I'm going to simply drag and drop that into this InDesign file. And it looks like this. It's some text with some styles applied to it. And I can then even delete it. You know, it's kind of startling, right? but it leaves behind these two style groups. They look like little folders, both of which are named Markdown. One contains a couple of character styles, bold and italic. Really shocking names there, huh? And, and a whole bunch of paragraph styles. Now I've got all these styles I can apply. And what this script does is finds text that fits markdown syntax and applies the appropriate styles to it. Now, how do you get the script installed? You might have downloaded it from that URL, but how do you get it in here? Well, in your scripts panel, which you get from window utilities scripts, you'll notice there's a folder there called user. And you right click on it, you can reveal it in the Mac finder or the Windows Explorer. And it actually takes you to that folder which is kind of funny. It's actually named scripts panel, not called user, but don't let that bother you. And then you can simply drag and drop. Let's see, where did I put that folder? There it is. Mark down to ID. You can simply take that script and this fine change support folder, drag them right down into the scripts folder, and then you'll have the scripts in the right place. And then just have to return to InDesign. You don't have to restart it. You don't have to quit InDesign first or anything. And they'll be right there in the user part of the scripts panel. 
I love how instantaneous that is. And uh, there, you know, you can customize keyboard shortcuts in InDesign, and I did so that I can apply a shortcut with Control M. That's not used by anything on the Mac. Uh, Command M might be, Control M wasn't. And so that quickly applies the script. That's how I did it earlier. Now, I got the script. I've got some styles that can be applied by the script. And uh, in case you were curious what that uh, text file looks like, I can show it to you. Um, it's not that pretty. I mean, the color coding can be if I allowed it to do some. Let me close this preview panel here and tell this that the syntax is JavaScript because it's almost, oh, pretty colors. Um, it's really busy. But these are all the finds and changes that apply styles to those little bits of syntax and then gets rid of the pound signs or hashtags, whatever you want to call them, and those other things that help to supply the styles, but we don't need them anymore. And then at the bottom, got the original queries that came with the find change by list script. So you can clean up garbage. All right, so that's what it looks like. Thank God you don't have to deal with that uh, because someone else did. You're welcome. And now back to InDesign. So I got a bunch of Markdown, we've got a script. I just double click on the name of the script. <laughs> I giggle every time because it's so fast. Uh, did I mention it's fast? Yeah, I think I did. And so I got all this stuff going on quickly. Now, if you like these styles, guess what? You're done. Congratulations. But what if you have a document, that's the one you saw over here briefly, that has styles already on the left. You can see them at work. And they're obviously not the same as the ones I am supplying you. And so you want to be able to take what I gave you and map those styles to your own. And how hard is that going to be? The answer is not much. Not quite as fast as running that script. I guess you can make a script to do this too. But it depends on the names of your styles. So here I have a number of styles like body copy, subhead, top header. Body copy is like the one I'm giving you called paragraph. Whoopsie. Should not have clicked on that. Thank God we have unlimited undo, huh? So I have styles I want to apply, just four of them from this long list of styles. I'm only using four of these, so I guess that's okay. I have the occasional bold. I might have an italic up in there somewhere. I'm not seeing it. Well, this paragraph is, but you know what I mean. So I have just a few things to do, and here it is. I'm going to highlight the folder, the style group called Markdown in the Character Styles panel, hit the trash can, and yes, confirm that I am really deleting that. But look at this. It's so sweet. It says, hey, look, I think you're using a style called bold that's in that folder. Would you like to replace it with something? And you bet I do. I want to use the bold that's not in that folder. Don't hit apply to all. Hit one more. It says, oh, you got some italic going on. I'm sure I do. Oh, yeah, there it is up there uh, from that folder. And I'll replace it with the italic that's not in that folder. Now they're applied. And luckily, they're not triggering a missing font message, but I wouldn't worry yet anyway. I'll do the same thing with the markdown folder in the paragraph styles panel. Highlight it, hit the trash can, it con and confirm that I am really doing what I said I wanted to do. And it says there's a style called paragraph in that folder. I want to replace that with body copy. There's one called heading one. That should be a topic header. Heading two should be a subhead. And finally, the block quote is an excerpt. Not so bad. I was able to map the styles I gave you in that download to the styles you might already be using. So you can go from Markdown, this wonderfully simple to type, simple to read and look at, uh, syntax for doing markup, and get that into InDesign and styled up appropriately. I hope you like that. If you do, you can learn more uh, on the, our YouTube channel, or you can go to luminousworks.com and sign up for our in-person classes. We have classes via Zoom, and we also have recorded versions of our classes, so you can take them at your leisure. Hope to see you, though. Be well.